All right, here we go. We have one of the most legendary singing hip hop R&B genre, you know, defining groups of all time, full force. What's good? Hey, what's happening, man? Okay, man. Happy to be here, Vlad. Before we, you go on, we're the three brothers. I'm Bowlegged Lou, B Fine, Paul Anthony, and we have three other members of Full Force, our cousins, Baby Jerry, Shy Shy, and Kurt. Six of us defines Full Force. Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm happy to have three of you here, though. Yes. No doubt, no doubt. That's what it is. So let's start from the beginning. You guys grew up in a very musical family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And at what point did you guys really decide, okay, we're going to start forming a group and we're going to, you know, put everyone together with the brothers and the cousins and everything else like that? Well, I think originally my, our father decided for us, <laughs> you know, he said, uh, this is what you guys are going to do, you know, uh, the three brothers. And then uh, eventually, you know, B was playing drums with our cousins. Well, don't, don't right? skip past that. Oh, okay. Something about dad teaching us how to yeah. sing. And, and Uncle Cito. And our Uncle Cito also, mm -hmm. they, they took us to the Apollo Theater, just the three of us, and um, where we won like four times in a row. And we went by the name of the Amplifiers back in the day. And it was the three of us. B was like, how old were you, B? Five. B was five years old. And, and, and when he was performing, and he used to steal the show, he used to impersonate James Brown when we performed. That's why he's so, that's why he knows all the old school musicians, because we've met like Stevie Wonder so many times. So, so my father is the one that started us with the singing. My uncle Cito helped us to go to the Apollo. Our, all of our parents, my mother was also one of the backbones with us as well as the three amplifier George brothers. And then after a while, we met up with the cousins and then B. Yeah. Well, long story short is that in junior high school, you know, I had this love for playing the drums and formed the band with the cousins, um, Jerry, Kurt, and, and Shy, JR. And then um, Lou came up with the idea of us joining together with Paul and Lou as the lead singers and us as the band. And that's because I saw them perform, yeah. just them. At Winthrop Junior High School. With Mike Hughes as on the congos, Mike Hughes yeah. from Cult Jam. Yeah. And they impressed me. You know, yeah. So then that's how we um, became full force. Mm -hmm. But truth be told, as a band, yo, we couldn't even get arrested. Yo, we was the most popular band in Brooklyn. We was playing, selling out clubs that all the headline acts sold out. But we couldn't get a deal for nothing. That's full force. We got turned down by every major label there was. And we, we couldn't even get a deal, you know, as full force, you know. Um, and see, that's another thing. We wasn't, we wasn't hip to like, performing original material. We just did a lot of cover stuff. But anyway, long story short, Steve Stone came with the idea of was like, yo, why don't you guys produce somebody? You know, and then by getting exposure that way, you know, you guys could get more pop, you know, popular. You might popular. get a deal yourself. Yeah. So I was excited about that idea. I was excited about it. Um, I think all of you guys were. I, I was the only one that really wasn't like excited because I just wanted full force to ban the group. And that's it. Steve Salem, who my brother brought up, may he rest in peace, mm -hmm. he went to college with me. He's a college friend. He majored in behavioral science, and I just loved his mind, and we just became great friends. He majored and I, in behavioral, behavioral science. Behavioral science. No he one really cares about that, but what the fuck? Nothing about, about music. He didn't care about music. And what happened is that he came to see us perform in Brooklyn. Steve Salem, he was the only white guy there seeing us, and he loved it. He started giving me ideas. I said, yo, Steve, I want to introduce you to my brothers and the guys, and maybe you could come in and work with us. So how did you guys go from the amplifiers to full force? Like, why, why the name full force? How we, how we ended up working with UTFO was that I had a girlfriend, a girlfriend named Booby, that went to high school. And it was a guy there named Kango, who was a dancer. He kept bothering her. So I really went up there to whip his ass. So what happened was Mike Hughes, who was still at Wingate at the time, I had just graduated, Wingate High School. Mike said, yo, he's going to be performing with the rest of them break dancers, the guy named Dr. Ice and some other guys break dance and stuff like that. You can see him there. Cool. So I went up there with the intentions of whipping this kid's ass. So the deal is, when I got there, they was amazing. You know, you know, back in the day with the white gloves, doom, doom, Planet Rock and everything. Long story short, um, I asked him to dance, you know, opening up for us uh, when we do our local shows. But we had no idea how, you know, how great they were as rappers. So 
from there on, what happened is that we got together and just created history after that. Okay, and Roxanne, Roxanne, that was their first single? Because it was what, hanging out with Roxanne, Roxanne on the B-side? Yeah, that was the first single. It's so funny because um, one of the people that was very influential in that being the first single, he was with us last week. Uh, I remember uh, we were trying to decide which would be the single, so I called DJ Red Alert. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I asked him what he thought about it. And he said, um, at that time, uh, Beats and Rhymes was going to be the one we wanted to go with, which was the A-side. Beats and Rhymes was the first single. Right. And then, really? we was gonna, then we was going to release Hanging Out. Right. And then Hanging Out was going to be the next single. B woke up one morning yep. and said we should do a B-side. Nobody was thinking about a B-side mm -hmm. for the record. For those people that don't know, the B-side is the other side of the record, <laughs> the vinyl people. So B just thought of a, doing a B-side. Otherwise, we were going with Hanging Out. Yeah. And B just told Kango and Doc this was his concept, his idea. And the three of them, Kango, Doc, the educated rapper, may he rest in peace, mm -hmm. Mixmaster Ice, they went in and did the, the damn thing with Roxanne Roxanne. And like Paul was saying, we was talking to Red Alert, right. and Red Alert was playing on the radio Roxanne Roxanne. When he should have been playing, we thought, he should have been playing Hanging Out. And we're like, you're playing the wrong record. No, that, I said, that's the B-side. Well, I like the B-side. Red was saying, I like the B-side. Well, he was saying very sleep. He was like, he was like uh, I like the B-side. I know Red, but the one that we're going is Zelda said, I'm gonna play the B side, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was Roxanne. Yo, Roxanne. Red, Red Alert broke Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne. Exactly. Period. Okay. So, Roxanne. Roxanne comes out, mm -hmm. and it goes crazy. And then Roxanne Shantae suddenly comes out of nowhere. Yep. Hmm. And does a response record, and we yep. just interviewed uh, Roxanne Shantae. UTFO. This is how the whole um, situation went. UTFO created a fictitious character named Roxanne. And it happened to be over the big beat. So when Molly played the big beat for me, automatically when you heard boom, boom, bah, boom, boom, bah, you thought Roxanne, Roxanne. So because I was doing a freestyle, I heard the big beat and I said, okay. He said, so what you gonna rhyme about? I said, I don't know. And then once I heard the boom, boom, bah, I said, well, my name is Roxanne, or don't you know? And that started it, so I brought her to life. So once I gave her a life and I gave her, I guess, you know, created a, made her real. Then we started selling a lot of albums. Full Force decided to come up with their own real Roxanne because I actually started making more money than UTFO, than the original record. So they came out with the real Roxanne. And then you had this sort of phenomenon right. that you've never seen before, before right. or since in music, where you had like, 25 different response records to Roxanne, yeah. Roxanne. It was like Roxanne's dog, Roxanne's Sparky mother. D. There was like Rox Roxanne's a Roxanne dance. Like, then we was... jumped on our own bandwagons and we came out with the real Roxanne. Yeah. Roxanne's <laughs> okay. doctor. And you know what's okay. so funny, the way music is, follows a cycle, you know, we were largely responsible for helping female rappers break into the business back in the 80s. And you know, you think about how we first told the whole music industry about Nicki Minaj as well. You know, so it's it's amazing. You know, something people don't realize is that that was Molly Mall's first like production in. You know, that was. And the funny thing is, is that they didn't know how we was going to receive it. Mm -hmm. They didn't know we was going to have beef, but we were cool with it. You yeah. know, we were totally cool with it. Now UTFO, they was another. They was highly insulted. I swear to God, to this day, I think rappers are the most sensitive as far as like, sometimes they can't differentiate between disrespect or criticism or just being too sensitive. They're like, fuck it, I don't care. I'm all of that right now. And that's what UTFO was. They was, yeah, was crazy. highly upset, you know? They became friends later on with Shantae and everything like that, but at the time, they was heated. Yeah, I mean, it launched uh, Shantae's career. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Sparky D. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. helped launch Shantae's career. Absolutely. <laughs> That's our girl now. You know. We love Shantae. So love. 